Welcome back to Homesteading with the Zimmermans, where we work hard and play hard on our little corner of land in Iowa. My husband and I were born and raised Old Order Mennonite, or Horse and Buggy Mennonite, as some refer to them as. And although we are no longer part of that culture or community, we are intentional about passing on the old-fashioned skills of our childhood to the next generation. In today's video, we have Ash and Mayan and their daughter Odea visiting us all the way from India. Ash and Mayan are Orthodox Jews and they have lots of questions about our homesteading lifestyle. So we thought it would be fun to have them use my filming equipment and follow us around the farm asking us questions and then we could answer the questions for them and possibly they have some of the quite same questions you have and we might be able to answer some of your questions as well and along the way we might even learn a thing or two about keeping kosher and the jewish culture good morning so we have guests on the homestead this week and they are going to film us doing a farm tour so i will answer their questions and hopefully some of yours but right now we are headed to milk the cows so this is odea and ash yeah, and mayan <laughs> so the animals are all anxious for their breakfast this is inky and we'll come back here and film these animals and answer questions about them. But right now we gotta go milk the cows. Let's Yay. do it. All right, here we go, here we down go. to the cows. Let's go. We've got almost everybody, not quite. Hello, big boys, how you doing? Boys or girls? <gasps> boys or girls, Adasa? Um, the reddish one is a boy, the other one is a girl. The reddish one is a boy? Ah, so where are we going to? Oh dear, do you know? Um, yes, that's where we're are we going? going? To milk the cows. So they are down here at, in the pasture? Yes. Easy by herself there. Um, we want to wean her off of her mom so we get more milk. Oh, so you put her there. Yeah. But she's happy. Yeah. Okay, we can park this here. A bit cold. Just a little bit. Maxwell, what is your job today? To milk the cows. Milk because Mitchell had to go work. Oh, usually Mitchell does it. This is Mitchell's week to help do chores. Mitchell and Hadassah take turns. That's why Hadassah's face is less than happy. <laughs> she looks happy with the day. <laughs> he has to do his chores, but he told her that he would take her turn next week one day, right, Hadassah? Yeah. So okay, that's, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. That's usually what they do. And what do we have here? Okay, so this is their. This is their food for the milk cows. Um, and they're getting a very nice amount of pasture right now. Yeah, look at this, amazing. So they wouldn't need a lot of rain, but my one mama cow is, um, she's kind of thin. So this is like a fermented hay. Wow. You like make, you do it? No, I buy it in in bags. Okay. But um, it's haylage. Wow. We call it haylage and it's fermented hay. And then uh, down at the bottom, I've got their, this is what Grain. they come for. This is why they love me. It's because it's like little calf pellets, like calf food. Whoa. Are you okay? This is and why, why is the, this thing? This like is the water to clean their teeth uh -huh. before we milk them. And when they're out on pasture, um, it doesn't, they're not real dirty because they walk through the dew and it's very clean. So it's just kind of to get anything off that's stuck on it. Amazing. Okay, to me because she just likes me and I can catch her and bring her right up. But my other cow has to be lured with food. <laughs> like humans. Yeah. <laughs> and she only likes this. Uh. So I have to dig everything else out so she knows. <laughs> Which spoiled one is that one? That's Gwen. Gwen! Where are you, Where are you this one? Gwen? Gwen is the very fat one. Point, show us which one. The biggest one. <laughs> yeah. She's staring at us, Gwen, right sitting now. Here, st sitting. <laughs> we are standing here because we're not getting too close so the cows don't be scared that they will come. 
So look at this. Hi Brenda, good morning. Hey Brenda. Good to see you girl. It's also my grandmother's name. <laughs> So you do two at a time? Yeah, the kids will start with her. Already started with her. Who likes to milk here? Adasa, do you like to milk? Yeah. You sound very excited. <laughs> Not that Gwen really needs it. She's fat. <laughs> so Ruth, what are you doing? I'm just cleaning off any dirt so that it doesn't fall into the milk. And afterwards, you're going to sift the milk anyways, right? Yeah, I still sift it, but this is just to get any loose dirt off for them to milk her. And then I squirt the first squirts onto the ground because bacteria can go up. Like dirt can get in. Oh, okay. And so then the first squirts are usually the ones the highest in bacteria. Interesting. All right, there you go, I'm guys. to ask why did she squirt a little bit before? Why did I squirt some milk on the milk? No, why was she, she already like started leaking. Yeah, because she, um. Was she just so full? Yeah, she's so full because her baby's only three months old. Oh, yeah. Lizzie's her baby? Yes, Lizzie's ah, her baby. Cute. So what do you think a lot of people do in machines and not yeah. by hand? Um, I have a machine. <laughs> and the kids use it when I'm gone but it's hard to sanitize mm. all the hoses so I prefer not to use it because I don't want to use all the harsh chemicals that are needed to sanitize all the hoses in the park <laughs> you see the cow there? do you want a milk? I think we I also don't have a um real good setup for washing the milker the machine and the hoses so it's much easier for me just to wash one bucket mm, got it and your hands <laughs> my hands <laughs> how's it going do you want to try actually i do I'll back up in the udder and then use your bottom fingers to squeeze it out and then you gotta open up let more milk down and then go oh wow Okay, so I put it at the top. Let's see. That's the way it's supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, you got some. Good job. That's the way. <laughs> wow, it's so funny. It really reminds me of a Very good, my aunt. It really reminds me of a person. <laughs> a person's nipple. Mommy! Ode. Ode also wants. You want to milk the cow? Come. You should try for sure. Do you hear this sound? The rhythm of the milk. Oh, it's so relaxing. <laughs> hey. Look at it, David. You see milk it. Oh, good <laughs> job, Ode. <laughs> Very good, Ode. Ode, you milking? Okay, let's do it together. Yay. Okay, so. But it doesn't come out as much as it comes out from here. What you do is you want to take your hand and then you want to close it up at the top with your thumb and your forefinger. And then you use your three bottom fingers to just squeeze the milk right out of the bottom. And then you open it up and let more milk come down so that it doesn't go back up. And then you squeeze whatever you have Mommy. trapped in here, Mommy. you squeeze that out the hole. Uh, wow. I've been milking for two, one wow. Beautiful. Wow. How long does it take to milk a cow? Um, I can milk about three gallons in <laughs> 10 minutes. Wow. Whoa. From age 10 you've been doing this. <laughs> yeah. But how do you make sure that the milk is going to go down? Just to let out whatever is Just left. Just strip. This is called stripping it, yeah. This is a very nice bucket. Wow. Ooh, your hands get sore after this. Yeah, your hands get sore, don't they? <laughs> Tell right. me what makes milk kosher. So basically, to make milk kosher, it needs to be... There is two types of kosher. Uh-huh. The most highest level, it needs to be milked by a Jew. Okay. Or was a Jew in the process of the milking. Let's say this milk now is a 
It's like highly kosher. Because you were here. Because we are here. And the second one, it's let's say that any milk, if if we know that it's coming from pure animal, so it's kosher. Okay. Because of the the yeah. spray tears. And they chew their cud. Exactly. Yeah. So she. So any animal kosher, or milk is supposed to be kosher. Yeah. Because every, everything that comes from kosher animal, it's, it's kosher too. Oh, okay. so, so we, this is kosher milk? Yeah, this is kosher. This is a, like the highly kosher milk. Okay. Yeah. Well, we personally drink milk that is just from a kosher animal. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we doesn't matter for us, but we have lots of friends who would only drink milk if it's if highly a Jew was in the process. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. yeah. Or what about, there's a few. <laughs> She's like, hurry up. Come on. Stop visiting. Stop I talking. Food. What? How much is it? This is probably about three gallons. We'll know for sure when we strain it, but that's normally about what she gives. And how gallons. many gallons in the morning do you usually do? Three. Well, Good. Gwen gives another gallon a little more. So. Wow. So what about the other cows? They don't get milked? Um, I'll tell you in one a minute. One used to. When, where's your one milk? One used to. <laughs> okay, so now... There's My milk, milk is in the... Oh, and there. Now so cute. Has... Look at it. <laughs> Before we weaned Brenda's calf, the calf was hurting Brenda's teats with her teeth. Aye. So there's the one injury on one of her teats that just doesn't want to heal real fast because it was real deep. So I'm putting cream on it. Oh. And here you can see this yeah, one. Yeah, wow. Yeah. That looks painful. Right. As a mother, I know. Yeah. Oh. So then, um, now, I, now that that one has that on, now I'll finish this one. Because I didn't want to do this before I had put cream on because yeah. I don't want to break it open. And I also don't want to milk it into my bucket after I put the cream on. Right. So every tea... Does it hurt her? She doesn't seem to mind it, but she's a very patient cow. Yeah. Not like Gwen. <laughs> Gwen. Gwen is a good cow. Because she, she likes the kids. Like she ah, likes that's good. But um, Brenda is a better cow. <laughs> so every teat have his own container or they all yeah. share? No, it's it's all separate up in all there. All separate up in there. Like so four, if she gets four mass, different. If she gets mastitis in um in one of them. In one, it's usually just isolated in that one. Oh, but wow. if it gets really bad, it'll spread to all of them. Ah, it's good. Uh huh. But it's separate compartments. So interesting. All right, now I'll help the kids finish. Who can I help? Let's see if Max <laughs> Can I help the kids? <laughs> yes, you may. <laughs> you gonna help the kids? Yeah, you can. Yeah, but nice. It's, but it's not. It's how many gallons? Like two yeah, gallons. she's only like. See, her baby would be almost two. Mm. So that's why she's not giving, she's not so, giving much. so much. Oh. Like nature just has its way of naturally weaning. The difference between uh, like homestead or milk cow than uh, industrial milk cow. But uh, about the quantity of the milk, about the quality of it. So for homesteaders, they are mostly like their priority is the health and happiness of their cows over quality quantity of milk. Yeah. So quality of milk over quantity. Yeah. That's what I would say is probably the biggest difference between commercialized dairy and... So, so you maybe Mommy. produce less milk from this cow? Yeah. But this milk is much more quality and much yeah. more healthy. Yeah, because we're not looking to make a lot of money on the milk. We just want highly nutritious milk rather than... <laughs> when saying hurry up. <laughs> rather than um, lots of milk and more money. Exactly. Beautiful. So maybe it's less milk, but it's much more quality. quality one. Yeah, like Beautiful. the animals. Um, so in commercial dairies, they would be they wouldn't be out on pasture because when they, I mean, some would, but yeah. as a whole, when a cow digests grass, it takes energy to digest the grass. So then she's putting some energy into digesting the grass and not as much into making milk. Mm. So then they don't produce as much milk, and then. A commercial farmer doesn't get as much money because it's not so much milk. So yeah. they put all their cows in a big building and feed them like ration food, you know, that's that's just 
for production of milk. Mm. Wow. You're good. <laughs> now we're putting the cows back home. And then say see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, milking cow. Okay, so this is milk cow. This is milk cow. She's just Fiona's just a beauty queen. <laughs> but, um, she is a beauty we queen. We will we will breed her and then her babies we will probably sell her babies because lots of people like those Breed. for pasture ornaments and pets because they're so beautiful <laughs> um, but they really are a beef cow oh. um, but we will probably breed her sell her babies and that will help offset our winter feed costs because the babies are more expensive and then those two are beef cows <laughs> so the one laying down is nutmeg and then her baby paprika is up here and paprika is for harvesting she's for meat She's half Wagyu, half Mini Hereford. And then the black and white one. Where is she? I can't even see her. That's Norma. No. <laughs> and she is half Jersey, half Normandy. And she is going to have a baby in about a month. Oh, wow. And then we will milk her as well. Beautiful. So then we will have three milk cows. But then before winter comes again, when we have to buy hay, we will sell one milk cow um, and just keep two of our favorite ones. Mm. What would be Gwen? No, not Gwen. We don't know yet. We have to, we have to do some testing. We want to test Brenda for A2, A2 milk and we'll, we'll keep the ones that we've been able to breed and get pregnant again. But in the summer, it doesn't matter how many cows we have because we have all this the grazing space. land to keep up with it right here will be cut it's almost time for harvesting it for the first time and it will be baled um, but we don't have the equipment to bale our own hay so we rent the land out and the farmer bales it and and we buy hay in <laughs> so humans cannot get nutrition from grass but then God provided animals that have four stomachs to eat the grass and give us this highly yeah, yeah, nutritious yeah. meal. Yeah. It's amazing. Unbelievable. Okay. Now we milk the cows and we have the milk over here. What you can get out of the of the milk? What okay. it's give to us? So this is milk from earlier this week. And because I'm not making cheese right now, because I'm busy in the garden and I'm trying to adjust to suddenly getting four gallons of milk a day versus before we got Brenda, we were getting one to two gallons a day. So I have all this milk to take care of. So what I'm doing is I'm just skimming the cream and I'm gonna save the cream because that's the most valuable part of the milk. And then the skim milk will go to the pigs and that will help our feed costs for the pigs. And we'll go to the barn and see the pigs and then you can ask more questions about the pigs then. Yeah. But. The other reason I'm not making cheese right now is because when Brenda came to us and the calf was, you know, tearing up her teats, we weaned the calf and then Brenda holds back her milk for the calf and then she got a little bit of mastitis in her one quarter and so I'm going to give it just a little more time because even though I feel like there's no more mastitis in it, when you try to make aged cheeses, it can show up that there was a, a high cell count in that one quarter so wow. i want to give it some time before i start making aged cheeses again um and the pigs really don't mind they, mm -hmm. they're crazy over the milk so here we have like a skim milk and cream yeah. what else you can make out of milk um so i'll make cottage cheese cream cheese mozzarella, ice cream. Ice, cream. ice cream um those are all things that you can make um with milk that doesn't have to be aged yeah. you know so your bacteria doesn't matter quite as much but when I want to make aged cheeses like Asiago and Buda case and um, what was the other one? Oh, cheddar? Gouda or I haven't made cheddar yet, but I plan to. I made Gouda and then when it ages, if there's a high bacteria count, then your cheese will get ruined as it ages. And that's a lot of work to make cheese 
So you want to make sure that everything is just right before you go to all the effort to make hard cheese. Mm -hmm. Got it. And one last thing. Okay. Butter. Butter. Oh, butter. you want to make butter today? Yeah. I will get you started on that right away. <laughs> I get so much whey and buttermilk that it just goes, to the, goes to the pigs. Yeah. Um, like I could put it on the garden. I could make things with it. But on, on this level, you're better off having pigs. Yeah. <laughs> because by the time I decide what to do with all this milk, I'm kind of, I've made enough decisions about dairy. Yeah. So we're going to um, keep some of the fresher milk. This is all like two days old. And we're gonna turn that into chocolate milk for the day. Yay, chocolate milk. And I'm just adding this to yesterday's chocolate milk. And then Hadassah we'll will- cacao and Yeah, Hadassah will add more stuff. And then this is going to the pigs. And this is gonna be butter. And this will be butter. This is crazy. So for the butter, we're gonna let it set until lunchtime because it'll turn to butter faster if it's not cold, cold. Right. Oh. It'll turn to butter, butter faster if it's about 50 degrees versus 35. Mm. Yeah. And all of this amazing knowledge you learned just from growing up? Or... A lot of it, I was exposed to it when I grew up. Like growing up, I was exposed to it, but it didn't become my own personal knowledge until I started practicing it myself. And then the knowledge becomes my knowledge. Yeah. But because I was exposed to it growing up, it wasn't um, a new idea. Right. But yeah. it, it took some exploring of my own, Your, yeah, to make it my knowledge. Beautiful. And then of course, a lot of mistakes. Yeah. Of course. What's going on here? Well, I am uh, using my favorite tool. This is a stir up hoe. And I'm just doing some light hoeing between the rows of my corn. So my corn is about two inches Can I long. stand here? Here I can stand, right? Yeah, you can yeah. walk in the garden. Okay. So my corn is about two inches tall. So I'm just using this hoe and I'm cutting off all the weeds that are between my rows of corn, uh -huh. just like that. So that they, the weeds don't grow up and start taking uh, moisture and nutrients that I want my corn to have. Beautiful. So it's important to cut the corn off. I mean, cut the weeds off before they get so big. So and how many times do you do that? Um, normally I keep the weeds down between the rows until the corn gets big enough that it reaches together and then it creates a shade canopy and then the weeds don't grow it. Don't bother about it. Mm -hmm. So the, the corn then blocks out the light for the weeds. But I have to keep the weeds down until the corn can get big. And then the next thing I need to do is I need to dig out these. These are red raspberries that want to grow where I don't want them to grow. <laughs> so I need to dig these out and put them in pots. And then I'll give them to friends and neighbors that want um, to start red, red raspberry bushes. And what's supposed to be there? This is where my corn is. My corn. All of this is corn? Yeah, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight rows of corn. Wow, do you can corn? I freeze the corn. And right here is um, Are those onions. mushrooms? Yeah, those are mushrooms. No <laughs> way! That's because of all the rain we've had. Wow! So then these are sweet onions. And they'll grow up and be the big softball size onions. Yeah. And those are the ones we keep for winter. Ooh! So these are all sweet onions here. What do you mean when you say keep for winter? Like we store them in the cold room. Oh. And then we use them all winter. But you don't can them because we also... Well, I don't. But I'll use them in, in some of my recipes that get canned. But mostly we just use them use fresh. Them. Got it. So we planted 150 sweet onion plants. Wow. That's and a then, lot. Yeah. And then here? Here we have red beets. Ooh, look at the leaves already. I know. They're so pretty. Gorgeous. So those are red beets. And here are carrots. This row. This tiny row here is carrots. And this row is carrots, right here. So it's gonna be quite a lot of carrots. Yes. And um, down here is already, you can already see it. Yeah, so these so, are spring onions. That we ate yesterday. Yeah, we put those in our salads. And then here is broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage. There's lettuce down at the other end. 
Here we've been eating. Woo! These, these are a French breakfast variety. And, and I amazing. like these because they're easy to slice to put in salads. Can I also have one? Yeah, you can have one. You can have as many as you want. Oh, thank you. Here's a little one. Ooh, that's a cute one. Mm -hmm. okay. Nothing tastier than eating it off the ground. You want some spinach to go with that? <gasps> oh, the spinach, tell them how it tastes like. It tastes like butter. The spinach tastes like butter. Mm -hmm. Wow. So the baby spinach leaves taste like they're dipped in butter. Here, Mayan. Thank you. Oh my goodness. They're As so a good. vegan, I'll just call this butter. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said <laughs> you'll like this, Mayan, because this tastes like butter. Let's <laughs> show them what the boys are doing. Yeah. Show them what doing. How, um, these are farm boys, you all. They can be on this for hours. Yeah, they're hauling wood to make bonfires. So what's here? Oh, well, this lettuce seed, I just seeded like grass seed. Oh. And then when it gets a little bigger, we'll cut it off like cut lettuce or leaf lettuce. Yeah. And we'll eat it like we do the spinach. And then I'll take some of my favorite ones when they get a little bigger and I'll transplant them away from their, you know, from this. And then they'll get, um, they'll give a nice big head of lettuce. That is so clever. Wow. And, this and then is here I have head lettuce that I gnashed on yesterday yeah these i bought as seedlings and planted them here and then we have grass clippings as mulch to lock the moisture in you can see how much more moisture is in there wow and that also works as a weed barrier so the weeds can't come through so why don't you do it for all your vegetables like that um number one because it's Too a lot of work. work to collect the grass and number two like say the corn makes its own weed barrier because it connect like, it makes a shade canopy yeah but wherever um something is going to be all summer like say the herbs here like my parsley this, parsley? this is cilantro and this is parsley wow and so like these will be here all summer so i definitely want um weed barrier here and then like my tomatoes and peppers, when we put those in, those will get weed barrier too. What is all of this here? These are like little red potatoes, like oh. early, early potatoes. Yum. Um, these are sugar snap peas on this fence. And... When did you do all of these? Um, I have to look in my diary, but I think we put these in like mid-April, so about a month ago. Oh, wow, because it looks really well. For... Yeah, it's really, um, our days are getting long, so right. it gets a lot of daylight hours, so then things just grow really fast. Amazing. And it's hard to keep up. Wow. And then these are strawberry plants that are blooming. Ooh. This is supposed to all be full of strawberries like this. Why? I can't um, wait to see. But... I got like a root mite or a bug in that that um, ate the roots, and so my strawberries are just struggling. Some of them. Yeah. Some of them. Some of them. Wow. This is Hi. Are you eating spinach? No. This is garlic. Ooh. Ah. And then these two rows of peas are like whole peas, where we'll shell them and and freeze the the little peas. And they are they're starting to climb on their fence. Oh yeah. Some lettuce ready for eating in here. We can have uh, more salad for lunch. Yeah. These are black raspberries. They're just really starting to branch out. In like a month or so, no? The yeah, holiday. around the 4th of July, we'll have black raspberries. I think one, two, I think there's four rows of white potatoes in here that aren't up yet. And those will be our keeping potatoes. That will make a ton of potatoes. Well, it depends on the season. Like, it depends on how our weather and, and moisture is. But we planted like 35 pounds of potatoes, and we hope to get 200 pounds of harvest from them. Wow. And then here is my green beans. 
Oh, cuties. So this is a double row. Even though they're bush beans, I like to plant my green beans in a double row because they kind of support each other that way. So that, and then this is where our tomatoes are going to go. That we need to plant them. Yeah, we're going to plant the tomatoes today. And that's it for the garden, I think. There's Hadassah's little garden. Hadassah, do you want to show my annual garden? Oh, Hadassah. <laughs> What is in your garden? Um, okra. Okra? Yeah, but I don't think it's gonna come up. Why not? I don't know. Which one? What is it, these two? And Please. then this is peas. And this is green beans. Aww. Yeah. And she has the okra somewhere? The okra is supposed to be right here. And why did you decide to do your own garden? I just thought it would be fun. It looks fun. Yeah. Did you build it? Um, yeah, I helped. You helped. <laughs> I hope the okra comes out because okra is yeah. delicious. I think it's a beautiful garden. Thank you. And what is this shed remind me? Um, it's a garden shed where we have all of our garden tools and stuff. That's so cute. Mm -hmm. Hi, Adi. Hi. Oh, bye. <laughs> so here on my arch. Oh yes. I have scarlet runner beans. Yeah, no. You see them? And they will climb up here and they'll give pretty, pretty red flowers and the most Dada. beautiful purple and black dried beans. Wow. They're like the size of a big lima bean and they'll be purple and black. And they're gonna climb all over? They're gonna climb all over this. Wow. And somebody on Instagram gave me the original seeds and then last year I had like four plants because she gave me four seeds and then I kept all of those seeds. Now I have like two dozen plants. Wow. And what about cherry tomatoes? Cherry tomatoes, I'll put those in the row with my regular tomatoes. Like I'll just put them at the end of my regular tomatoes. But don't they also need to like climb on something? Um, I tie them up because even my regular tomatoes get um, a fence. Nice. So then I'll tie the cherry tomatoes up on them. Look at this amazing. It's like so soon, in like a month and two months, it's all gonna be like. <sighs> yeah, in a month. Right. Because June, things just grow like crazy in June because our days are so long. Hey, oh, Julia. Hi, Lizzie. So, Lizzie was born on Valentine's Day. Really? Yeah. So, she's about three months old. Aww. And she will be a milk cow. So we're raising her to be a good milk cow. She is so cute. Yeah. Oh, she likes you. So Lizzie can't be with her mom because she hurts her mom's teeth. So she gets um, grain and grass. And can I put her in with Dave? Yeah, you can put her in with Dave. So then every day, we make sure she gets some work with the lead rope. <laughs> <laughs> Hi! Hi! Hi, Dave. Came to so get some is, attention. This is Dave, donkey. He keeps um, Lizzie safe. There, she, he's a good friend for Lizzie. All right, are we ready? Back up, Dave. <laughs> Hi, Lizzie, good girl. Dave is fat. He's very overweight. Chubby little boy. Yeah, and donkeys get fat on grass. So he can't go down with the cows because he'll get too fat. <laughs> I imagine we would get fat on grass. <laughs> Eating spinach. It's because God created donkeys to be a desert animal. So they just need a few bites of desert grass every day and they're good. And here in Iowa, they have all this lush grass, so that's why he's fat. <laughs> he's not made for Iowa grass. <laughs> so I have chickens that were born in the barn. 
And look at this one. I know. Is he she ha nice? Whoa, it's a she? Uh huh. She has a whole book going on there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so these were hatched here in the barn by a broody hen, so they don't associate with the chicken house chickens. That's so funny. So they hide their eggs in here and we look for them in here. I have like a whole flock that doesn't associate with the chicken house chickens because they were they hatched in the barn, so they think they belong in the barn. And then this, this is Juliet. Hey, she has some she eggs. She has an egg. You see it? Yes. Hey, Juliet. Sorry, Juliet. Did I disturb your egg? Hmm. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> she has what to say. Yeah. And then these are our pigs. Oh wow, look at this. That's Poppy, the mama. And then these are her five babies. <laughs> and they are all for harvest. Some of them will trade for, like people do services for us, like our AI tech or something. And they'll say, when your hogs go to harvest, we want half a hog or a whole hog. So that's like a trading thing that it's nice to have a couple extra ones. The pigs? Say oink, oink. Oink, oink. Oink, oink. Oink, oink. They're gonna love this, aren't mm -hmm. they? They will. The I turned the fence off. What's the yellow thing? So when we put the pig food in, in the milk, it expands their stomach and then they can eat more. <laughs> and I'll take the bucket and try to lure them out. And then they get fat fast. Uh, All right. And you want that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. What's what? What is what's what? Keeps you in shape, Ruth. Right? Yeah. Look at you, cuties. They won't get quite that big because she's a breeding fairly uniform in size, which means that we've been giving them enough food because, so if you're trying to raise pigs for, um, for meat, you'll want to give them access to food all day long. Because otherwise, if you just feed them once or twice a day, they tend to push each other away. And then you get one that's smaller, you know, or runtier, you know, because it doesn't, it gets pushed back. Right. Yeah. And so these, these will be closer to nine, closer to a year old before we harvest them because they're part heritage breed and those finish out slower. Got it. Yeah. So ideally, we would want to put them back there on the wood pasture. Um, but we just haven't gotten around to making the proper fence for them in the wood pasture. Bon appetit, guys! Romeo! <laughs> How are you doing, boy? Hi, guys! <laughs> Aww. Good to see you all! So, my laying chickens... And Mac, the boys already got the eggs this morning. But um, I let them out to free range about three o'clock in the afternoon. Because if I let them out before that, then they go and hide their eggs in the barn. And if I make a fence for them, then they eat all the greens out of the fence. And then they're just like coop chickens. And I like for them to go all over the barnyard. So I let them out about three o'clock to sunset and then I lock them up again. Beautiful. And this is... <laughs> <laughs> this is this. a broody hen. I'm gonna check if the boys got the eggs from her because, yeah. <laughs> they are scared of her because she'll peck them. And then these are our next batch of, batch of laying chickens. Some, <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> some of them we hatched um, in our incubator and some we bought. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is being fussy? Yeah. <laughs> Some of them that we bought in for fresh bloodlines. And then we also have some Muscovy ducks. Look at them! And they will be, we'll eat the drakes and the hens will be for eggs. 
So at the end of the day, we took Ash and Mayan to visit my brother's family and his farm. My brother and his family are Old Order Mennonite, which is also the religion of mine and Elvin's childhood. Since both the Jewish and the Mennonite cultures are highly religious, we thought that Ash and Mayan would find it very interesting to visit with my brother and also to have their first ever horse and buggy ride. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope that you enjoyed the dialogue between our two different cultures today on the video as much as we enjoyed learning about um, the Jewish culture of our friends and just spending time with them.